Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Painting of the Week. I missed you all last weekend. Um, and before we begin, I just want to say, the Painting of the Week is a project that I started almost a year ago now. I think, um, yeah, almost a year. And I really had no idea how successful this would be. And um, just recently, we've actually reached 100 subscribers, which is excellent. And um, some videos have, have proven extremely popular, maybe not by... Uh, generic YouTube standards, but <laughs> by my own expectations. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who actually watch these videos, especially um, those of you who watch um, each new video every week. I appreciate your support. So now let's jump into this week's painting. We're looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, something we haven't looked at before, and that is symbolism. And the philosophy behind symbolism, and as with many art movements, this this went beyond the visual arts. This was um, a philosophical movement as much as as much of an artistic movement um, and it, it's confusing to define and I'm gonna try to explain it as clearly as I can and well hopefully we don't lose anybody here but Gauguin painted um, Yellow Christ in 1889 this is oil on canvas and it is considered probably the defining piece of symbolist painting so this is the kind of thing where, before I really had any appreciation for art whatsoever, I would look at it and think, well, you know, this doesn't really look very good. It looks like something that, you know, maybe an art student in, in high school would be able to draw. So what's the big deal? And to understand that, you have to understand what symbolism was about. And this, this doesn't look realistic, right? Because art is more about than just depicting things exactly as they look, right? That gets into some aspects of... Um, realism, and by realism I don't mean the realist movement like Courbet, I mean an actual realist approach to nature, naturalism, where things look exactly as they do in reality. But in symbolism, the philosophy was that artists are not imitators of nature, right? We don't, we don't copy nature. Artists are creators. They transform the facts of nature, nature as it is, into symbols, symbols that represent the inner experience or the substance of the facts of nature. So there's much less of a concern regarding what's actually being seen with the eye. And concurrently, there's a paradigm shift toward objectifying the subjective. And what I mean by that is the externalization of ideas, as opposed to the trend that had predominated in art before the symbolists, which was not objectifying the subjective, but subjectifying the objective, seeing nature through an individual's temperament. So the symbolists switched that, they reversed it, so that it, instead of art being about seeing a, a particular image through the artist's temperament or through their point of view, art becomes about like, externalizing these ideas, about capturing the facts of nature in a symbol that everyone can relate to, an objectification of the subjective aspects of nature. So like I said, it's complex. Hopefully hopefully you were able to follow that. It's, it's difficult to explain. Anyway... Let's talk specifically more now about Yellow Christ. This was painted in um, pont aven so we're in the Brittany region of France. We're in northern France. We have a crucifix recontextualized into the French countryside and then surrounded by these Breton women who are praying and meditating next to this crucifix. And this is, let's use what we now know about symbolism, and, and we can appreciate this painting, I think, a lot better. Obviously, this crucifix, right, would not have been exactly in this in this Brittany region of France, right? pont aven did not have this giant crucifix here. And obviously, Jesus was not crucified in France. The point is, we are not depicting things as they actually are in nature, but we're using the crucifix as a symbol to capture the essence of some fact of nature. So... I want you to keep that in the back of at back of your mind as we continue to talk about this painting, is that we're not depicting any kind of reality here. We're not depicting a scene from everyday life. We're painting symbols, and these symbols have a deeper meaning beyond simply the, the visual and the spatial relationships that we see here. In terms of the actual style of this painting, there's a distinct flatness in form, right? A very heavy outline, particularly on Jesus' body. This is characteristic of what's called uh, cloisonism. And cloisonism is um, sort of a more modern term, but it describes a style that's reminiscent of medieval stained, uh, the stained glass artwork, or um, Japanese prints, which we haven't looked at. But if you think of stained glass, you've got 
really bold colors and flat shapes that are very uh, heavily segregated by, by bold contours, right? Those thick black lines of metal that are used to separate the panels of glass in a stained glass window. And we see that kind of technique used in cloisonous paintings as well. And this is also, an, this is probably one of the, the top examples of cloisonism. If you ever look up an example of that, you'll, you'll see this picture because everything is so heavily outlined. Also, and this goes back to the, the idea again of we're not depicting things as they are in reality. We're depicting symbols of nature. There is a non, what's called a non-mimetic use of color. And by non-mimetic, I, I mean that this color is not copied from reality, right? The countryside was not this yellow, <laughs> even in autumn. And Jesus obviously was not, you know, suffering from, from jaundice here, like it looks like in this painting. The colors themselves are, are used as a symbol. We have an interest here in using color and in simplifying shape and form to suggest emotion. In this case, a warm spirituality probably experienced by these Breton women, right, who are Catholic and who are deeply engaged in this uh, prayerful, meditative experience, almost imagining, right, Christ in their presence, like, you know, in the Bible, when two and three, or what is it, when two or three are gathered, are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. We have a symbol then of the, the omnipresence of Christ as this crucifix in the midst of these women who are praying. And that warm spirituality is invoked by Gauguin's warm color palette, right? Lots of reds, um, oranges, lots of yellows. And that spirituality is something that's shared amongst these women and also shared with, with Christ. Even though he's not there, right, in the flesh, we have this, this symbol of his presence. And also there's a relationship here in terms of color between Christ and the surrounding autumn landscape, suggesting, um, as I said before, the universal presence of Christ, especially in these women's lives, and also the presence of God in nature. And that's really what I think Gauguin is trying to get across here. <laughs>